So you thought we had the final say on electric motorcycles with that Zero video, didn't you? Well, so did we, but then a company by the name of Volcon reached out to us and said, come check out our Grunt. It's this super cool, super fun, off-road oriented electric motorcycle, and we think you guys are gonna dig it. So we are out here on their test site, checking this motorcycle out. We're gonna tell you whether or not it's something that you should think about adding to your stable, and whether or not something like this is the future of electric motorcycling. Stay tuned, it's gonna be a good one. Now guys, I know we just put out a video saying that we weren't gonna do dirt content anymore, but this really isn't a dirt bike video, and I beg you, don't click off, because there's something really cool here that I think begs for a lot more exploration, and something that I think you really ought to give the time of day, because I do think that this sort of electric motorcycle has a great future. So once again, this is the Volcon Grunt that we are out here looking at. And Volcon is a company that's based out of Round Rock, which is just north of us in Austin, Texas. And they were like, come check it out. You're motorcycle people. We got this cool motorcycle. Come take a look at it. So that's exactly what we're doing. Now the specs on this here bike are a little bit different than you might expect. On this bike, we are only dealing with a two kilowatt hour battery. So that's a lot smaller than something like the 15.4, 14.4, even 17.7 that we have in the Zero that we just reviewed. That bike's battery is much larger, but the cool thing about this is that you can swap the batteries in and out. That is a huge boon for somebody who wants to have a bike that they can charge and ride at the same time because you plug one battery in at your house and then you swap it out when you get back and put another one in, you get back out on the trails or what have you. So that is super duper cool. Now some specs on this machine itself. This thing is putting down 50 horsepower and a claimed 75 foot pounds of torque. Gonna tell you right now, those are some electric bike numbers and you're not gonna feel 75 foot pounds of torque out of this thing. However, the torque out of it is really nice and you'll see it when we get to the vlog here in a second. The next thing that I really like about it is that the seat height is very low and the weight is very reasonable. The frame on this is mega overbuilt, which is fine because it means you're never going to break it, but it does add a lot of weight at 330 pounds, which is about the size of a DRZ 400. This motorcycle is not street legal. I'd like to point that out right now. It's not street legal. It's intended for off-road use only but I believe that there's a great on-road future for some motorcycles like this. Now, before I keep talking any further, let's get me and Josh out on these bikes, out on the trails, and see how they shake down. Real quick before we jump into the test ride, I need to take a second and remind y'all that the Jixxer 1000 giveaway is wrapping up this Friday at midnight. If you want to get entered to win, click that link down below and use the code SQUID on any purchase over on shop.yaminoob.co for max entries to win this month. Your time is running out to get entered. Again, use the code SQUID for max entries for the month on any purchase at shop.yaminoob.co. The link is in the description. So out here on the trail, the first thing you notice about the Volcon, at least in my uh, initial impressions here, is just how much of a normal motorcycle it feels like honestly um i'm kind of impressed by how well it does all of the same skills that i've accumulated on a uh, normal dirt motorcycle you know adventure bikes dirt bikes all that stuff it's translating but it's also almost trivialized by the freaking size of these tires man how does it feel back there for you yeah, the same way, man. It it doesn't feel like doing this. Like this is the stuff I come do on dual sports all the time now. That like pretty much when I get a time to ride, I'll come try and find something like this to ride on a dual sport. And it this thing does it better <laughs> than my CRF. Yeah, uh, I can go faster. I can brake harder. Um, and I think that all comes down to the stickiness and size of the tire. Yeah, and honestly, it. You know, I was kind of expecting this to feel like a toy. Uh -huh. Um. It really doesn't. It feels like a proper vehicle, you know? I agree. I totally agree. It it feels as planted as like a little mini bike on the street almost, like a little Grom or something. Yeah, th this is just straight up like an adventure mini bike. <laughs> it, yeah. It's so cool. And honestly, I'm having a blast just goofing around on this little trail they have us on. And it's just, it's eating it up, man. It is. It's so much so that we're like, we're getting faster and faster and faster. Uh, 
first time riding these bikes. Yeah, and you know, obviously they're uh, you know demo stuff that we're we we don't want to just absolutely eat the crap out of it into like a tree or whatever. Um, but you know, I'm feeling pretty confident to get moving on this thing, even after just doing this uh, little trail a couple of times. I agree. I think that this ride mode, adventure mode kind of gives you that confidence you know because you're not going to get spooked by the power it comes on really gently to get up to a high speed you really got to hold it open for a minute and then that's not a diss like that's a positive on this bike because when you get into sport mode it's like you, you'll get yourself into a tree really quickly yeah it's it, this thing has a lot of you know for lack of a better term grunt <laughs> it absolutely does yeah this was another section that's, that that wide tire kind of feels a little weird. Yeah, because the wide tire has so much edge grip on it, right? Um, we're yeah. going through these ruts that were certainly carved by other little other little grunts here, and uh, it it bounces between the sides of the ruts a lot. Um, it feels like it gets knocked off line uh, because the side of the tire is so. Uh, abrupt that's yep. one thing that's a little different on this machine right or to get out of a rut it's like it really you got to really hold that bar because <laughs> it doesn't want to but now i'm gonna kick mine up into sport mode here because okay. i'm feeling a little zesty Heck yeah. so we have the we have the sport stroll and uh explore we just did that lap on explore and now i'm gonna go through on sport mode I will show you guys stroll real fast though and stroll is literally a stroll you know this this is stroll mode yeah our chaperone told us that uh stroll mode he just uses for like loading it in the truck <laughs> yeah this is this is probably what you put your little kid on or whatever yes um but let's let's go have some fun in sport mode man but how cool that a machine that like we can have this much fun in sport mode and i mean you can push this thing can go faster than i can take it right now for sure for sure a hundred percent uh and i'm sure if you rode this for a year you'd get pretty dang quick on it um but you could also you know put your grandma on it and put it in uh stroll mode and it you know you can't do that with a lot of dirt bikes you can't do it with 450s you can't do that with anything two stroke even no. even uh 250s you know just because they're so tall and yeah. yeah, this this little thing makes, uh, you know, this sort of trail riding a little bit more accessible for the average person, I would say, because uh, totally. the seat height's only 32 inches. And even that, it feels a little tall because, you know, it does the thing where, like all motorcycles do, where it squishes down under your weight. Yep. Well, the weight is so low, too, the way this thing is built, that it never feels like it wants to fall over. No. I'm noticing, like, it never, even in these corners... I, it the tires are so wide they're kind of pulling you back up right more than they are trying to get the bike to fall over yeah now one thing as we're picking the pace up a little bit here that i do want to talk about is the braking situation on this motorcycle because it's <laughs> quite a bit different than what you're used to if you're a normal viewer on the channel this thing has a front brake in the exact same spot that you would normally expect and then instead of the clutch, it's got the rear brake. So it's more like a bicycle in that sense where both of your brakes are on the handlebars. And man alive, does the rear brake provide so much more in terms of braking performance than the front end does. Yes. Like we're coming into this hairpin turn and I just sort of mashed the rear brake. And it, it, you know, it didn't skid, it didn't do anything wonky and I'm just holding it through these corners. <laughs> And it's feeling really nice. And that feels like that's a decently advanced, intermediate, advanced off-road ability to be so good with your rear brake that you can do what we're doing with the rear brake with your foot, with your yeah. right foot. You know, uh, That's hard. I'm not, I can't do that on my dual sport well. Um, but here, having it in the hand, I don't have to worry about shifting ever. I can just grab as much rear brake as I want, modulate it, the pressure with my finger because it's a nice master up front. Uh, you got a great control. Yeah, and especially so we've got that kind of tight right coming up here at the end of this. Yep. Which I've overshot now a couple of times. <laughs> but I'm going to kind of come in a little bit hotter this time and let's see what, what ends up happening. It's right here. So mashing the out of the rear and there we go. We made the corner. 
Yeah, exactly. Man, when you lock that tire up, this thing comes to a stop. Yeah, it really does. Ugh. Yeah, and then you use both front and back, <laughs> and it's uh, it's pretty pretty impressive how quickly and comfortably you can stop. It's just not it's not even sketchy. Yeah, nothing's gonna like throw you over the handlebars. I really appreciate the the just approachability of this thing, dude. And it's it's so balanced. It's nuts. Yeah, I mean, I do wish it was a little bit taller, um, at least in the handlebars, but I'd just put a taller bar on it if I had one. All right, we are heading into a dry riverbed with some bigger baby heads just to see what this is all about. Oh, goodness, I'm going to break it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh, wow. Yeah, this is definitely a lot tougher, but this is exactly what it was like tuned for. This is the sort of just, you know, single track, check the property line sort of deal. Man, it is so fun too. What yeah. A great way, what, a, what a great chore to have to do. <laughs> All right, so now we're like properly spooling it out. I think that was probably about 40. I didn't have the, um, I didn't have the Speedo on because I have the, you know, blocks display. I got up to 35 right there, 34, 35. Oh, here we go. <laughs> oh, oh God. <laughs> right. That was fun. No big deal. <laughs> and this is where it's really nice to have the front rear brake because you can just modulate it really nice and easily while you're going to over all this crap. I'm gonna stay to the right here. And now it does feel like the suspension is working quite a bit going down those rocks. Um, you know, it doesn't have the same travel that a dual sport would, but going up over this stuff, it just sort of muscles its way up. It never feels like it's getting out of sorts. All right, you gonna go swimming? Going swimming. Wow, <laughs> no big deal. Yeah. <laughs> Dang. <laughs> Again, that nice fat wide tire working to help you out quite a bit through that water crossing. Exactly, yeah. I mean, like I didn't even need my feet on the pegs to move the bike around to keep it stable. It just stayed right up and down. I just had to keep the throttle at five or 10%. Yep. All right, Josh, real quick, your favorite thing. What is your favorite thing on the Volcon? The grip, the wide tires. Yeah. yeah. We didn't say it earlier, guys, in that first piece of camera, and we did mention it in the vlog, but these tires are like as wide as my head. They're crazy wide, and it does make the bike handle a little bit different than you might initially expect, but you get, to, you get used to it really fast, right? Yeah, we were getting faster and faster and faster every single little lap around this loop here. And I mean, for me, honestly, I think it's just how the motor feels. The throttle feel on this is really nice. That's one thing that it's really hard to get right on an electric bike because the throttle can feel almost robotic, almost too linear. But this, it's, it's really nice and predictable. And because you're not worried about going super, super fast, you can forgive a little bit of the wonkiness in the throttle because you're doing so much other stuff, you know? And generally the throttle feel is great. Another surprise for me, rear brake. Right. Yeah, with your hand, Yeah, <laughs> the hand rear brake. Yeah, it was huge. Like, I mean, cause I, my off-road riding, I'm not good with my rear brake. I'm all the time like figuring out, oh, what do I do in this situation? I'm like, oh, it's cause I don't have my foot on the peg and I can't use my rear brake. Yeah. But this, it's like, it's right here, just like a bicycle. So now here's where I wanted to get into the real nuts and bolts. We've talked a lot about what the grunt feels like, but this is an $8,000 bike, 7,995 bucks, if I remember off the top of my head and it's not plated. So initially my gut feeling was like, ooh, this might be a bit of a tough sell. But the more I think about it, the more it's actually kind of nice if you have even a little bit of land, this is a great way to traverse it, yep. right? And you can take it out to the trails and goof around with it. You can throw it in the back of your truck and use it as your pit bike. A lot of options here and it's a very nice bike. There's a lot of good components on here. But I'm thinking, and I, I wanna get your opinion on this. I think the future here 
is, yeah, this is a great product, really awesome, but I think there's more that we, this is just like the tip of the iceberg, right? We talked about how this frame is mega overbuilt. The, the subframe here is held up by a member that's half the size of the rest of the tube steel on here. And I feel like you could cut the weight by probably 30 or 40 pounds and find a really nice little streetable package. You ditch the mega wide tires for a more normal street tire like what the Super Cub has, for example. And then you have the detachable batteries. So this bike right here actually has two and you don't run them in series. You have to run one and then you deplete it and then you run the other so you can plug it in. But I wouldn't have both batteries on the bike. What I would do is I would put a plate on it, put some lights on it. I would have one battery in my apartment, plug it in, and then I would go run my errands because this has a great spot for a milk crate on it. Mm -hmm. And then when I'm done, I pop the other battery in that's now freshly charged because it was sitting in my house for two and a half hours to go from zero to full. And I have a great runabout. That's really what I think the electric bike market is missing, right? It's going for these big flagship bikes. What are your thoughts on that? Yeah, this has like, this was built for a decently specific application that's not what you're imagining. Yeah. And it came through that it's super clear to me what this was built for. I grew up uh, outside of Austin checking the mail on like a riding lawnmower. We, can, we were talking about that earlier. Um, how when you've got a lot of ground to cover, you've got land, uh, it's a lot of walking if you don't have something. A lot of people have gators or yeah. there's things like that. This is such a fun way to go around. It is so good at, at this job specifically. I'm sure there's an iteration in the future that makes sense on the street, but I'm blown away at how fun this is at doing this. It's like the first time, if you if you learn how to ride on just regular full-size street bikes, and then the first time you drop on, jump on a 125 or a Grom, and you're like, it feels so playful. Um, they teach you how to lean on like mini bikes and stuff because you can feel the grip on the side of the tire easier. All of those same principles kind of translate into this and then you have so much grip that it's just like a little magnet to the ground. Yeah, um, yeah it's, it's a lot of fun. Um, I'd love to have a street one as well, but I'd love to have one just if I had a ranch. Honestly, it is so good at what it does. It's really, really good at what it does. But I, again, I'm thinking for the like wide adoption because I'm seeing this is probably more narrow of a niche than it perhaps actually is because I'm a city slicker through and through. Grew up in Chicago, moved to Austin, I live downtown. Right. But you grew up out in the country, and so you, you see this for what it is. Yep, right? absolutely. Which is a great piece of equipment to have out where there's a bunch of open range. Man, and if you hunt, they are working on a, a belt drive option for this. It makes no noise. The most of the noise you hear is literally the dirt under moving underneath you in the chain. Yeah. So if you could put a rifle mount on here or just on the back of that and, and use this to go out to the blinds or something like that, one, it'd be more fun than any way you, you can get to your blinds. For and sure. And two, it's, it's perfectly quiet. So uh, it makes a lot of sense for that. So guys, this is a very cool option and I'd would love to see more manufacturers out there looking at not necessarily mini bike because this this is a big vehicle right it's bigger than a Grom it's bigger than a Cub it's yeah. like a full-size scooter here mm -hmm. I would love to see more manufacturers getting into these swappable batteries these smaller packages more affordable packages too again eight grand for this which might be steep for something that doesn't have a plate you slap a plate on this I would rather have this than a carbureted ruckus. For sure, for sure I'd rather have this. So guys, that is my thoughts on this. Josh, any last thoughts here? Man, I hope you can get from the vlog uh, a sense of how much fun we were having on these things. That's the biggest thing for me is I was like, yeah, we'll come test them and I'm sure it'll be good and go down the road in a straight line. But it does more than that. It's more than the sum of its parts. It's a lot of fun and uh, you can really get after it on you them, really can. which is a blast. Um, I was blown away by how hard you can break when you do the front and the rear with this kind of tire setup. Uh, it was like nothing I've ever been able to do off road. So yeah, it's really cool. Great job. So double thumbs up here. Hey guys, I would highly recommend checking out something like this if you have an opportunity. Very cool, a very different style of electric bike. And one that I think has more of a future than Zero's monopoly money, pay to unlock all your features and stuff, because that's, God, that's just not okay. So 
Final thoughts on the Volcon, double thumbs up, and we are gonna get out of here, probably go ride around a little bit more, because let's be honest, we're having a great time. So we're gonna call it a day, and hopefully you guys enjoyed this video. And until the next one, we'll catch you in the next episode of Yammy Noob.